What are kind of the carbohydrate cravings that you get? Hmm, I would have to say soda, cookies, sweets, snacks, kind of all the bad ones. Those will do it. Those will get your blood sugar up really quick, which is what your body thinks it wants. But the problem is it spikes it super high and again, insulin breaks it down. So we're on this kind of roller coaster. And this is kind of the big picture when we think about a diet that's heavy in carbohydrates, even if they're the more complex good carbohydrates because it still increases up your blood sugar. And even when you're an athlete, but especially for people that are not athletes, we just can't burn all of that energy that we get when we eat those carbohydrates. And if you're trying to lose weight, it's even harder because you're relying so heavily on those carbohydrates, those whole grains, but you're not able to use all of that energy. Essentially what happens is we have high levels of insulin all the time and high amounts of insulin in the body can actually lead to some pretty nasty complications down the road. Things like insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, heart disease, dementia, things that we do not want, right? So high insulin levels contribute to you staying in fat storage mode versus fat burning mode, which is when it's kind of ruled by glucagon. So insulin and glucagon are counterparts, like I said. So when one is high, the other is low. Does that make sense? You're with me? Yeah, I think that definitely makes sense as I feel like when I eat carbs, uh, they get this weird energy thing where I get tired all of a sudden and I want to crave more. And then, yeah, I think that kind of explains why I'm not in progress. It kind of seems normal to eat in that way of eating lots of carbohydrates because that's what everyone has always been telling us. But let's kind of move on to thinking about fat and protein and how important they are because they work a little differently in the body. They're digested more slowly than carbohydrates are because they're more complex, complicated molecules and it actually takes your body longer to break them down. So when you eat fat and protein, your blood sugar stays more stable. Instead of that huge roller coaster, it's much lower like that. So you don't have the cravings, you don't have the feeling super hungry, you don't have the you know energy dips where you just feel exhausted and you need to eat something right now. Because as we evolved, kind of as a species, we were used to having periods of feast where we would eat a ton and then famine where we would have no food. And because of this, we evolved a way to store energy during times of feast for when we ran out of food in a famine. And the storage system is fat. Once it saved our lives from starving. So even though we kind of hate fat now, it's actually really important. Do you believe me? No, it's crazy, but it makes sense. It is crazy, but fat is actually really important and our body being able to store fat is important. We just have to also be able to burn it when we want to, right? When we need it. As we evolved, the cue that was developed to kind of tell our body to burn fat was a lack of carbohydrates, not just a lack of calories. And this is why it can be so hard to lose fat on a traditional kind of low calorie diet where you're restricting and starving yourself. Because even though calories are minimized, there's still that constant influx of sugar and carbohydrates and therefore constant high levels of insulin. And when insulin is high, remember glucagon is low. And if glucagon is low, we cannot tap into fat for energy. So what this means that if we want to effectively tap into our stored fat for fuel, we have to kind of recreate the state where you have low insulin and high glucagon to kind of simulate this state of being in a famine without actually being in a famine. 